Hello my friends, in this video we will be taking a look at the Autosomo DNA results, predicted phenotype trades, GD match and G25 results of a uh, Mesolithic period hunter-gatherer from Belgium, from this region in Belgium right here, uh, Oberkassel ATT001. Uh, it is a female, so it does not have Y DNA. There is no Y lineage we can discuss for this sample, but there is a mitochondrial lineage for this sample. The mitochondrial lineage for this individual is U5A2, a uh, very typical mitochondrial lineage for various Europeans. Uh, let's jump straight into the um, G25 breakdown for this sample. Modeling this sample as a mixture of Western hunter gatherers, ancient North Eurasians, and Pinarabasi hunter gatherers from Anatolia, so a mixture of Western hunter-gatherers, ancient North Eurasians, and Anatolian hunter-gatherers. This sample pretty much shows up 100% Western hunter-gatherers, so there is no uh, foreign non-European admixture. It is 100% a Western hunter-gatherer sample. Uh, this is what this sample scores with Eurogenes K36. It essentially scores mostly from Scandian, East Central European, and North Sea admixtures, as well as East Eastern European admixtures. What's a little bit interesting is it scores 10.9% uh, Basque. Uh, let me, I don't know how to, I want to center it so that you guys see the information in the center. So, 39.08% Finnescandian, 18.9% East Central European with uh, Eurogenes K36. So, Finnescandian would here stand for sort of Finnish or East Finnish admixture to be more precise. East Central European sort of stands for Lithuanian or Latvian, Latvian like admixture. Uh, North Sea is sort of Germanic or Scandinavian admixture, North Germanic admixture. Uh, Eastern European is like, like uh, Russian or Erzia Moksha. And then what's interesting is they're scoring 10.9% Basque, which is really surprising a little bit. But I also remember Cheddarman and various other um, Western European hunter-gatherers scoring Basque as well. So this is maybe not so surprising when you consider the other Western hunter-gatherer results that also score Basque. And then there is 4% North Atlantic, and then there is 2.3% French. So this is maybe not so surprising. And of course, the modern populations that this individual resembles most are Latvians, Lithuanians, various Baltic people. People who have the most admixture from European hunter-gatherers are going to be scoring closest to this European hunter-gatherer. This is no surprise to anybody. Um, all Europeans today are quite distant from this individual. This is because all Europeans today have quite a lot of southern Mediterranean um European farmer and Caucasian hunter-gatherer admixture, but nonetheless, there are still a lot of Europeans in the Balt in the Baltic region. Uh, Baltic U Baltic Europeans are still quite northern, and around half of their ancestry is still deriving from the European hunter-gatherers. So in the Baltics, still they're quite close. They're they're still relatively compared to like Spanish people or like Greeks, they are still quite close comparatively to these to the rest of Europe, they are still quite close to people like this, to this Oberkassel individual. So they are still going to be quite, um, out of out of the rest of Europe, they are still closest to Oberkassel, people like this individual. Uh, with my trade predictor, we're going to look at the ethnic calculator results right now. And we see that the closest populations here are Finnish, followed by Slavic mercenary from Chimera, followed by Kievan Rus, Kievan Rus, uh, Sungir 6, which is a... Um, Russian Russian sample from Kiev, Kievska Rus, followed by modern Russians, followed by Fonobikers from Ansarvia, followed by British Belbiker. So various Northern Europeans. It's interesting that um, Bailuli life from Lithuania doesn't show up closest here, but it's pretty typical result, uh, kind of what you would expect. With 549 SNPs, this is what we ended up seeing for this individual. And the closest mixture is a mixture of Finnish plus Slavic Chimera mercenary. Uh, followed by Turkic Caspian Steppe plus Bailuli Life from Lithuania. Uh, followed by Slavic Chimera Mercenary plus Bailuli Life from Lithuania. Followed by Finnish plus Finnish. Followed by Speaking Escorted Wear plus Bailuli Life from Lithuania. Very interesting models here. So all the models are basically European, Northern European plus Northern European. Definitely quite interesting to see that. Um, so I was talking about the modern Europeans who resemble this individual. No modern European really resembles this individual in a in a close way. All the modern Europeans who sort of resemble this person still don't really resemble him ethnically. Uh, the, the distance is still going to be very, very, very high. Um, the resemblance is still very, like, it, it's it's a very faint resemblance. Obviously, like a Latvian or a Lithuanian, they might be the closest Europeans to Oberkassel or Cheddarman, 
but they are still very, very distant ethnically from these people, um, from these Western hunter gatherers and whatnot. But nonetheless, they are the closest Europeans to these Western hunter gatherers and the rest of European hunter gatherers. There is no other European ethnicities aside from those in the Baltics that are closest to uh, European hunter gatherers. Is what I'm trying to the point I'm trying to make here. Let's look at the code calculator results. Let's see what phenotype this individual has, what uh, they look like. So it looks like they have blue eyes with an amber center ring. This is a very high percentage for blue eyes with an amber center, 56%. So we can pretty confidently say that they probably have blue eyes with an amber center ring. Uh, hazel eyes is pretty pretty large percentage here as well. Uh, green eyes, pretty large percentage. Uh, blue eyes, quite small percentage, but there is, there's still a likelihood of blue eyes. For brown eyes and darkest brown eyes, very small likelihood. Probably doesn't have brown eyes or dark brown eyes. Uh, for hair color likelihood distribution, looks like they have... Actually, they could have uh, black hair, light brown or dark blonde hair. Uh, dark brown hair is also sort of possible. Even light, even light blonde hair is also sort of possible here at 6%. It, it is really quite possible, but red hair is sort of out of the picture. Probably does not have red hair. So really, they could have any hair color besides red, but most likely they have black or light brown or dark blonde hair. For skin color likelihood distribution, it looks like they most likely have olive or Mediterranean skin tone, but light brown is also sort of possible at 16%. Uh, white or palest skin is not really possible. Dark brown skin is also not very probable. It's only 1.6% likelihood, so most likely they have olive or Mediterranean skin tone at 80% almost 82%, actually, 82%. And uh, light brown skin is second, most likely, at 16.4% likelihood. Uh, for hair texture, it looks like they most likely have straight or wavy hair. Uh, curly hair is also possible at 19%, and kinky hair is not really probable at all. And for nose shape likelihood, they most likely have a Greek-shaped nose at 76%. Uh, Snub-shaped nose is not very likely. Not very likely at all, uh, at 24% likelihood. For coloring-related variants found in the file, it looks like they have all the blue eye variants in HERC2. Uh, they also have blue apple type 3 and blue apple type 2 and blue apple type 1. They also have all the blue eye variants in OCA2 as well. Definitely very interesting to see that. So I feel like if we look at the uh, OCA2 and HERC2 eye color calculator results, we're going to see very, blue, very, very blue results there. They don't have any light color variance in this variation of SLC24A5, so definitely some predisposition to light pigmentation of skin. And this also contributed to the score for eyes and hair as well. They don't have any light color variance in, this, in these variations of SLC45A2, so also predisposition to dark color of eyes and hair and skin as well. But they do have two light color variants here in SLC45A2, which is very interesting. Uh, they've got, she's got one light color variant in this variation of IRF4, quite typical for European hunter-gatherers. And no light color variants in any of the MC1R variations, so no predisposition to being ginger. Let's check out the phenotype oracles. Actually, let's check out the OCA2 and HERC2 eye color calculator results first. So this takes into account only the genotypes in OCA2 and HERC2 to calculate eye color. And here she definitely has blue eyes. And likelihood of brown eyes is actually 0.08% and dark brown eyes 0.00%. So definitely has very blue eyes if you take into account only the genotypes in Okato and Herkta region. Uh, let's look at the phenotype oracle right now and see what phenotypes she resembles most. So it looks like for the phenotype oracle, the closest phenotype to her is this, which is Alpinid. Kind of an uh, Alpinid Central European phenotype followed by this which is um like a russian phenotype it's called north pointed but i don't really consider it like um i don't know i don't consider it uh north pointed i can't really call it north pointed it doesn't look mediterranean to me whatsoever it looks like a very northern northern looking phenotype to me followed by this which is a corded phenotype actually to me like uh just from a purely aesthetic point of view uh, this phenotype right here on the top, um, the one I'm pointing to right now, looks a lot more northern than this corded, quote-unquote corded phenotype on the bottom. And for the mixture of phenotypes, um, 
for the Oracle. Looks like the closest mixture is a mixture of 50% NIS uh, Basque or Southwest European phenotype plus 50% NIS Nordic. Uh, second closest mixture is a mixture of this uh, stranded with green eyes plus 50% Nordic. Uh, third closest mixture is a mixture of stranded with green eyes plus 50% corded. Uh, fourth closest mixture is a mixture of Basque with, I think, slightly lighter pigmentation. Of, is, it, is it slightly lighter pigmentation? No, not really. So fourth closest mixture is a mixture of Basque plus 50% uh, Nordic. And uh, fifth closest mixture is a mixture of Basque, looks like Basque plus 50% Baltic. Definitely very interesting. All right, now let's see the biomarkers panel results for this individual, for her. Uh, looks like she's got a predisposition to below average level of vitamin D. Kind of unhealthy. Below average level of vitamin D. Uh, below average level of LDL, LDL cholesterol, which is really good. But also below average level of HDL cholesterol, which is kind of bad. Uh, average level of glucose, actually above average level of glucose, which is kind of, kind of bad. Uh, above average level of hemoglobin, which is okay. Above average blood pressure, which is bad. Below average level of iron in the blood, so it looks like that she does not have uh, variance for hemochromatosis. If she did, she'd have score. She would be scoring higher for that. Uh, looks like she does not have. Um, she has uh, average predisposition to sex hormone binding globulin in blood. Looks like she's got below average level of red blood cell count in blood. Uh, average, slightly below average number of uh, base pairs for the telomere length, which is pretty pretty typical, and definitely above average for height above average predisposition predisposition for height which is very interesting so this above average predisposition for height for a um it's definitely very interesting to see that above average predisposition for height uh i'm not sure what the height of skeletons for these obercastle skeletons was but I know that uh, apparently Yamna skeletons were much taller than the typical skeletons for like farmers in Europe. All right, let's see the apologenic risk scores for her and her conditions. She was predispositions to various conditions. Looks like she's got above average odds for kidney stones, above average odds for hemoglobin E disease, risk variance here. Uh, you can look that up if you want to. Uh, you can pause the video and just look it up if you're like really cur curious about that. Uh, below average odds for migraine. Average odds for lupus, above average odds for gout, below average odds for thyroid cancer, um, average odds for eczema, very high odds for exfoliation glaucoma, and average odds for every other type of glaucoma. So let's look that up. Let's look up exfoliation glaucoma and see what we find for that in the file. So she's got a genotype here for extremely high odds for, for exfoliation glaucoma. So that makes sense. And this actually is in the rare diseases and traits panel. Uh, she also has the genotype for hemoglobin E disease here as well. So I guess we found both of these here in the rare diseases and traits panel. Pretty good. Uh, for PCOS, she's got above averages for PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. She's got above averages for cataracts. She's got very high odds for age-related macular degeneration. So, so far, we're seeing a lot of really unhealthy stuff here. A lot of really uh, unhealthy genotypes, uh, un unhealthy results. Um, Okay, so 5.9 times, 5.9 times, 1.8 times. So definitely, yeah, I understand why she's scoring so high for the uh, risk for AMD. Uh, 2.27 times the odds for rheumatoid arthritis. Let's look that up as well. Let's look that up as well. So um, she's got two genotypes for greatly increased odds of rheumatoid arthritis. And... Um, one genotype that does not affect score, and uh, one genotype that lowers the risk of rheumatoid arthritis slightly. All right. So so far we're seeing a lot of really concerning, a lot of really concerning um, genotypes here. Uh, above averages for Tourette's as well. I'm not seeing anything below average. Above averages for epilepsy. Wow, that's crazy. So she's she doesn't have anything below average so far. I have not seen anything below average. Well, I've seen uh, thyroid cancer was below average. Uh, migraine was below average, but like nothing. Wow, that's crazy. All right, so she's got averages for asthma, uh, below averages for leukemia. That's good, I guess. Uh, very high odds for vitiligo. Um, 
and she's got above averages for myopia. She's got averages for corneal astigmatism. She's got below averages for primary biliary cirrhosis. She's got below averages for stroke, which is good. Uh, very high odds for male pattern hair loss. All right. Which is typical. I mean, if you're European, you're typically going to score higher for male pattern hair loss. Uh, she's got below averages from atrial fibrillation. No variance found in the file, which is good. Um, below averages for deep vein thrombosis. Average odds for unipolar depression. Average odds for bipolar disorder type 1. And average odds for schizophrenia. All right. She's got average odds for type, type 2 diabetes and average odds for type 1 diabetes. She's got above average odds for Alzheimer's, which is pretty interesting. And she's got below average odds for multiple sclerosis. So that's good. She doesn't have risk variance for multiple sclerosis, which is really good to see. Uh, probably doesn't have any risk variance for MS in the HLA gene, which is really good as well. Uh, for the cancer section, no risk variance for breast cancer in the important variants. I, I marked the important variants with important before them. So she doesn't score those, which is really good. Uh, for testicular cancer, she's only got two risk variants for testicular cancer out of 18, which is really good to see. Uh, no risk variance in Ketal G, which is really good once again. R really, really good stuff. So she definitely is a little bit protected from testicular cancer. For the celiac disease section, looks like she um, has only one risk variant out of 10, which is really good to see. For GSS, no risk variants found in the file. For Crohn's disease, five risk variants. None of them are marked as important. Uh, for everything else, looks like, looks like she does not have any uncommon risk variants. I'm not seeing any uncommon risk variants. Everything here is common. Nope, she has one uncommon risk variant for familiar to aortic, aortic aneurysm here, which is this one. So she does have one uncommon risk variant, but aside from that, no uncommon risk variants. All right. Pretty typical stuff. Uh, let's go over the rare diseases and traits panel. Looks like she does not have... Um, let's see. She has this genotype leads to 20 times increased risk of ankylosing spondylitis, so she's some predisposition to that. Um, not a carrier for San Filippo. This genotype leads to high risk of autoimmune diseases. Carrier of risk level for neural tube defects at spina bifida, but aside from that, I'm not seeing any other conditions she's predisposed to. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go through the monogenic traits. She's definitely a woody year, so this is very typical for various hunter, uh, European hunter gatherers to score woody year. I noticed that European hunter gatherers tend to be woody years in terms of phenotype, uh, so this takes into account the genotypes in combed, MAOA, and MAOB. So, uh, woody year would be. Uh, lower activity of the COMT and MAOA enzymes, so slower dopamine reuptake uh, and higher dopamine levels, therefore lower stress resiliency and higher ability to motivate yourself, higher ability to uh, perform in low stress environments. However, reduced ability to perform in high stress environments, hence why it's a warrior phenotype. This person doesn't really perform well in a high stress environment, but performs really good under low stress conditions. Uh, I noticed that it's a very common, uh, most European hunter-gatherers tend to score the same thing here. They all score what year. So that's very interesting. Uh, for dopamine D2, this individual scores um, predisposition to intermediate number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain, intermediate D2 receptors. Um, so intermediate predisposition, predisposition to such conditions as schizophrenia and bipolar. Definitely very interesting. For 5-HT and serotonin, looks like they have a predisposition to intermediate levels of 5-HT which is quite uh, typical. So intermediate odds of such conditions as uh, depression and anxiety for autism. Looks like they have a predisposition to lower odds of autism, which is really good. So, so some slight protection from autism, it seems. Uh, for lactose persistence, looks like they are likely lactose intolerant. They are definitely a little bit uh, predisposed to being lactose intolerant. They are not, they don't have the uh, European variants for lactose persistence. But then again, there's so many of these variations that are that are um, implicated in lactose lactose persistence versus lactose um, lactose intolerance that you can't really predict that with like four SNPs. I feel like so you know you can't really say uh, for OXTR and empathy gene they have a predisposition to average level of empathy. That's based on these five SNPs, five genotypes. So based on these five genotypes, they have a predisposition to average level of empathy. Uh, for diabetes, we remember they were scoring average for both type 1 and type 2, so we don't care. 
Uh, hemochromatosis, not a carrier for C282Y. All right. For uh, Alzheimer's, they're, they're scoring above average for Alzheimer's. No risk coherence in APOE, though. No risk coherence in APOB, which is really good. APOE, which is really good. Uh, multiple sclerosis, no risk coherence in HLA. Uh, for cardiovascular disease panel, it looks like they have a predisposition to intermediate odds of cardiovascular issues, which is really good to see. Intermediate is good. Uh, for facial morphology panel, looks like they have all European EZAR variants, no East Asian variants in EZAR. Uh, intermediate, no size, higher odds of protruding nasal bridge. Uh, likely nose pointing up based on the genotype in DCHS2 and slightly thinner eyebrows and lower odds of actually possibly lacks um, some missing teeth, possibly has missing teeth. They're, they're definitely very interesting here. Uh, no micropenis. Did I miss something? No, I did miss something, yes. So they have um, they have some risk variance for vitiligo in the HLA gene, which definitely does explain the high score for vitiligo in the, the uh, polygenic risk score panel. So they have some risk variance for vitiligo in the HLA gene. Um, they got a uh, mix of muscle types, likely more sprinter rather than endurance athlete. They got one fat gene variant in FTOs, RS99, 309, high risk of obesity and sleep apnea. They most likely have photics re reflex. Uh, and they are not an Asian flusher. They have lower odds of alcoholism and normal risk of esophageal cancer. They have a genotype that's really rare that leads to larger brain volume, which is very interesting. Um, the risk of heart failure due to beta blocker medications for them is essentially slightly above average. All right, and... Okay, for alcoholism, they have slightly below average odds for alcoholism. Um, they have no risk variance for testicular cancer and ketol G, which is really good stuff. So these two genotypes for ketol G, they, they have a reduced risk of testicular cancer for both of these genotypes, which is really good to see. Uh, really, really good to see here. Um, they have reduced risk of le leukemia based on genotypes here in leukemia panel as well, which is really good to see as well. Uh, for MTHFR panel, they have a genotype here, which is really healthy, which leads to normal homocysteine levels. But here they have a genotype that leads to impaired folate metabolism. So I feel like they might have a little bit predisposition to higher fo higher homocysteine levels on the homocysteine on the homocysteine panel because of this genotype. But we'll find out. Uh, we will find out uh, for celiac disease panel. No variants for celiac disease in the HLA. No risk variants in the HLA gene panel uh, for. Okay, for HIV and AIDS panel, no risk, no protective variants from HIV, which is really unfortunate, but also no no risk variants for that. All right, for the HLA gene panel, it looks like they have a predisposition to lower odds of autoimmune disease. So it looks like the risk variants for HLA in the uh, HLA variants that are implicated in um, vitiligo were not were not enough to score intermediate or highest they still score lower odds of autoimmune disease which is really good to see so it looks like they still score lower odds of autoimmune disease for the hla gene panel really good to see that uh mtrr gene panel looks like they have they actually have some genotypes some risk variants for disorders of intracellular colobin metabolism which is really unfortunate one here and one here so that's two risk variants out of six which is kind of high um but then again, it's not a very high high coverage file, so the, it could be way higher. Could be way higher. Um, I was way off for the homocysteine panel, by the way. For the homocysteine, pa homo homocysteine panel, they actually have uh, genotype. They have, they have a predisposition to lower homocysteine levels, which is really good. But then you have to consider. Um, then you have to consider the CBS panel and, and the uh, the impact it has, because if you look at the CBS panel, it looks like the genotypes with the highest impact are this and um, they have lowest pl plasma homocysteine levels here so that contributed the most to the score and they also don't have any variance for homocysteinuria in the file so that contributed the most to the score and because of that they're scoring lower for the homocysteine levels in this panel so that makes sense and um, they're also scoring this which leads to decreased uh, level of uh, plasma homocysteine which is really good as well they have this genotype, which also leads to decreased homocysteine levels, but it's a small impact genotype. And their only genotype on the CBS panel that leads to higher levels of plasma homocysteine is this, but I don't remember it being a very big impact. So really, uh, it makes sense that they're scoring lower for the homocysteine 
for, for, for the homocysteine panel. It actually does make sense. Uh, and they also don't have any risk benefits for homocysteinuria. So there you go. Quite healthy, quite healthy overall. Um, quite healthy. The only problem here is the uh, macular degeneration and the rheumatoid arthritis. That was really unfortunate that they scored, that she scored the way she did for those. Uh, muscular dystrophy myopathies, no risk variance for that. Uh, no risk variance for ADL either. Color blindness panel, she has one risk variance and OPN as one is W. Uh, for obesity, she has uh, heterozygous genotype in all the variant variants in FTO, so she has some predisposition to obesity in all the FTO variants. Uh, for syncope panel, based on forest and peace, she has average predisposition to syncope. And for bio trace panel, let's see. Uh, one copy of the hunter-gatherer CLTCL1 gene variant plus one copy of the farmer variant, intermediate ability to process carbs and sugars. Farmer allele is C. All right. We're going to skip all that. And we're going to move on to the blood group panel. Her blood type is actually definitely type O. Very precise blood type prediction here. Uh, definitely type O blood type. The most common blood type is type O. Uh, if you're watching this video and you don't know your blood type, it's pretty safe to assume you're probably type O. Most people are. But um, definitely very interesting that we covered this, this sample here. Um, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And also... Check out the description of the video. In the description of the video, you will find not only the link to download the raw DNA file that I was analyzing in this video, but also the links to buy my trade predictor executable, which you can use to generate a report like the report you've seen in this video uh, for your MyHeritage 23andMe or Ancestry format file. But also you can find uh, the links to purchase a report for $4 with my trade predictor or seven dollars for two files also with my trade predictor the link to purchase these reports will also be in the description of the video all that will be in the description so make sure you watch the video and read the description afterwards thanks for watching uh i will also remind you to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and um you know make sure you write a comment do something you know interact somehow thanks for watching goodbye